New discoveries about the magnetic folds. One, calculation of frequency and energy of the magnetic fields. Two, new explanation for the intense attraction and repulsion of the magnetic poles. Three, nature and structure of magnetic fluxes. One, calculation of frequency and energy of the magnetic fields. To calculate the frequency of the magnetic field, we use the following experiment. Two annular magnets with identical characteristics are placed facing each other by the same poles. The upper magnet is in equilibrium thanks to the interactions between the force of its weight and the magnetic force of the lower magnet. Therefore, the gravitational potential energy of the upper magnet must be equal to the magnetic energy of the lower magnet. Then, we measure the distance between the two magnets. By multiplying this distance with the mass and the gravitational constant of the Earth, g is equal to 10, we obtain the gravitational potential energy of the upper magnet, which is equal to the magnetic energy of the lower magnet. On the other hand, we consider the magnetic energy of the magnet as n h nu and deal with the calculation of the frequency of the magnetic field of the magnet. So we have the above tests are repeated by different magnets. Case 1 Both the lower and upper magnets are 2.50 grams. The distance between the two magnets is 2.30 cm. Therefore, we have Case 2 Both the lower and upper magnets are 5 grams. The distance between the two magnets is 2.32 centimeters. Therefore, we have Case 3 
both the lower and upper magnets are 7.50 grams. The distance between the two magnets is 2.33 centimeters. Therefore, we have We continue the same approach and we have Based on the above experiment, it can be concluded that in which 10 to the power of 30 is our constant and there is a variable coefficient a, Notice, as we know, force lines or magnetic fluxes are invisible and on the other hand, they pass through objects. Considering these characteristics, we can certainly say that the frequencies of magnetic fluxes are obviously higher than those of visible waves. It can therefore be deduced that the start of the frequency range of the magnetic field must be 10 to the power of 15 Hz. So, in this test, the amount of N is also around 10 to the power of 15. We repeat the experiment with 45 grams magnets and the following results is obtained. In this experiment, we reach similar results. So, it can be said that logically the beginning of the frequency range of magnetic waves should be 10 to the power of 15 Hz, and therefore the beginning of the interval of n is 10 to the power of 15 too. On the other hand, as you can see, the value of distance d is between 2.30 and 3.72 cm. And according to the formula obtained for the magnetic energy of the magnet and averaging the energies obtained in the experiments per gram of magnet, the energy of one gram of ordinary laboratory magnet can be considered approximately equal to 3 times 10 to the power of minus 4 joule per gram. We call that as solid energy constant, S of E. So the amount of magnetic energy of ordinary laboratory magnet is generally equal to where m is mass in units of grams. Therefore, by measuring the mass of a magnet and using this formula, the energy of the magnet can be easily obtained. Notice 1. Considering that n nu always has the constant part of 10 to the power of 30, by increasing the magnet mass, the coefficient n nu will change and the value of 10 to the power of 30 always will be constant. 2. Although by increasing the mass of magnet, the number of magnetic fluxes n and magnetic field frequency will increase, but this increase is such that the frequency remains in range of 10 to the power of 15 to 10 to the power of 16 hertz. Now we will study the dependency of magnetic frequency nu and the number of magnetic fluxes n to the mass. 
As it was said before, the frequency will remain in the range of 10 to the power of 15 to 10 to the power of 16 Hz. And also, the number of magnetic fluxes can be defined as follows. Where A is between 1 and 10, therefore, On the other hand, we obtained as a result as we said before so by averaging 1 over A and putting it in the relation we have The constant value is called solid frequency constant S of nu and we have where m is the mass of the magnet in units of grams therefore by measuring the mass of the magnet and using this formula the magnetic frequency of the magnet can be easily obtained As a result, the energy and frequency of the magnets can be easily calculated by these two formula. Notice. It should be noted that, as it was said previously, by increasing the magnetic mass in addition to the frequency, the number of magnetic fluxes will increase accordingly. But considering the limitations of the frequency range of the magnetic field, it can be concluded that although the magnetic frequency of magnets is dependent on mass, but it has limitations and always will be remained in an approximate range of 10 to the power of 15 to 10 to the power of 16 Hz. But the magnetic field energy of magnets, considering the wide range of variations for n, may have lower limitations. The accuracy of this formula is about 97%. Two, new explanation for the intense attraction and repulsion of the magnetic poles. We should note that same as the electricity that electrons from higher potential points transfer to lower potential points. In magnetic fields also, magnetic fluxes move from n-pole by higher potential to the s-pole. If magnetic poles be opposite, they will attract each other intensely and if the poles be alike, they repel each other intensely. Generally, it can be concluded that like poles repel each other with a force equal to the sum of the two values of those forces, and opposite poles attract each other with a force equal to the sum of the two values of those forces. Three, nature and structure of magnetic fluxes. According to relative penetrability of magnetic fields and its special and beautiful state, it can be said that magnetic waves are not single photons. Rather, they are a group of photons that are joined together in a chained state. For better conception, it can be said that whenever we bring two like poles of magnets closer to each other, the contrary effect is seen, as if we have placed two invisible springs between them and we are squeezing the springs. These springs are the same as continuous magnetic fluxes. Due to this special form, it can be said that the structure of the magnetic field is similar to the structure of gravity flux and chain photons. Since in this model, toward the linear direction, the fluxes are firm and steady and to the perpendicular direction, they have curvature property. 
These magnetic fluxes are made of photons, but the placement and the structure of these photons are interconnected like chains. In fact, magnetic fluxes bend and compact and again return to their original shape. So it can be said that the magnetic field fluxes, similar to gravity fluxes, are made of interconnected like photons.